life is one day at a time dot com. Welcome to life is one day at a time dot com. I'm Mr. Chestnut. Thank you for joining me again on another day of life and another day of love to live in his riches and glory. Praise God. I'm praying that you're prospering in mind, body, and soul, domestically, socially, and financially. I know this is in 2024. A lot of things are happening. People are protesting for things that they have no control over, but they're protesting because we live in America. And in America, we have freedom of speech and we can protest, but we have to do it legally. And we can't just go around taking over schools and campuses and acting like you're homeless. No. It's not the way to protest. And then there are others who pray. Yes, pray. Pray f fervently on the fact that we know in the end, when the imminent return of Jesus Christ hits this planet again at his second coming, and last week we talked about the appearance of the Lord and the coming of the Lord. Tonight we're going to get into the rapture theory. The concept of the rapture theory is a great interest in de debate amongst scholars and, and theologians and believers for decades. One aspect century to this theory that the, the difference between the appearance of the Lord and the coming of the Lord, we're gonna explore the distinction between these two events and their relationship to the rapture theory because we're going to talk about the rapture theory we're going to get into it the appearance of the lord refers to the time when jesus christ will re reveal himself to the world signaling his return and the beginning of a new era this is supposed to be at the seventh trump the appearance is believed to be a grand spectacle that will be witnessed by all all believers unbelievers alike and is commonly associated with the second coming of Christ where he will descend from heaven and establish his kingdom on earth at the seventh trump. This event is believed to be characterized by numerous signs and cosmic disturbances and creating a sense of awe and fear among those who witness it. On the other hand, the coming of the Lord, specifically in the context of the rapture theory, and we're talking about the rapture theory, refers to a more secretive and selective event. According to this theory, believers will be taken up in the air to meet the Lord, while non-believers remain on the earth to face the tribulations and judgments. This event is often betrayed as a sudden instantaneous gathering of the faithful without any prior warning or visible signs. The difference between these two events lies in their scope and visibility. The appearance of the Lord is a universal event and will be witnessed by everyone, while the coming of the Lord is described in the rapture theory as a more secretive event and affects only a specific group of people. The appearance of the Lord is associated with the resurrection of the dead, the final judgment, and the establishments of God's kingdom on earth. 
In contrast, the coming of the Lord is as part of the rapture theory now. Focuses on the deliverance of believers from the impending tribulations and the promise of eternal salvation. The distinction has profound implications for believers who adhere to the rapture theory. And those who subscribe to this theory anticipate being part of the select group, being part of the select group that will experience the coming of the Lord before the tribulations and judgments that befall the earth. This belief instills hope, comfort, and a sense of assurance that they will be spared from the horrors of the end times. Now, if you turn on TV, you can see some of that right now. But for believers who will constantly anticipate the Lord's coming, it's important to note that the rapture theory remains a matter of interpretation and speculation within the Christian theology. There are different views on the timing and the nature of the rapture, and not all Christians subscribe to this theory. While some see it as a literal event that will occur in the future, others interpret it as a symbolically or reject it altogether. The distinction between the appearance of the Lord and the coming of the Lord as related to the rapture theory should be understood within the context of various theological perspectives and ideas. In conclusion, the difference between the appearance of the Lord and the coming of the Lord, particularly in relation to the rapture theory now, highlights the contracting nature and scope of these events. While the appearance of the Lord is envisioned as a grand and universal revelation, the coming of the Lord, as described in the rapture theory, is considered a more secretive and selective gathering of believers. Understanding the distinction between the two provides an insight into diverse interpretation and beliefs surrounding the rapture theory as it, it has implication for believers and non-believers alike. But that's another story. But we'll pick this up as we continue next week as we get deeper into the rapture theory. Well, we'll see and just understand the distinction as it relates to the appearance of the Lord and the coming of the Lord. I'm Minister Chestnut. We'll see you next week. LifeisOneDayAtATime.com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock.